From the Aleuts at Kizar to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. This is going to be a fun one because we have a great conversation coming. We need to find out who's going to be the Sam linebacker. Is it going to be the one, the only Al Shair, or is it going to be Flooding and Foles? Well, Sam means a strong side generally, for those who don't know. Well, thank you for that. And it's generally the guy, for those of you who don't know, it's the guy that comes off wait, the wait. field and passing. Is Sam down. generally or generally Sam? <sighs> That's one of those things you're going to going to have to ask God when you get to heaven. Um, well, thank you. I will. <laughs> um, Top of the list. So, the Sam linebacker is your third linebacker that comes off the field during passing situations, during nickel situations. Um, it's a pretty interesting battle between Al Shair and Flanagan Foles because Al Shair, although and Flanagan Foles, although they've played the same amount of years, Al Shair has a whole lot more experience on the field than him. But... Flanagan Foles actually might have more upside than him athletically. It's kind of an interesting situation there. Um, the, the experience, as far as in-game experience, definitely goes to Al Shair. He's played. He's definitely been a solid player for the 49ers, especially last year. He started a lot. I don't remember. I don't know if he started every game, but he started a lot. Come save me, someone, if you know the stat. Um, but Flanagan Foles has been a core special teamer. And he's a very, very athletic linebacker that's switching from strong safety at University of Arizona. I don't know. It's it's an interesting matchup there. What do you think, Alex? I mean, it's one of those things where with these two specifically, um, like, like you had kind of talked about, specifically with these two, Al Shire is someone who has demonstrated it more in an actual game setting, in an actual situation in which he's been on the field and been able to translate that into some production right not a lot of production necessarily but some flanagan Foles is kind of coming into this and just really has been more of a special teams type of guy for this team and so really at this point i think most of us feel like with both of these guys you're kind of comfortable with what they can do you know what they can do you know what they bring to the table um and, and the big thing right now is is the niners might be making a shift defensively away from that base 4-3 down look where you have three linebackers on the field traditionally. And so you're not going to have these guys having to play a lot of snaps or doing a lot of things. And so if you're asking these guys to be playing 25, 30% of snaps, it's not the end of the world because Flanagan Foles hasn't really been on the field. And Al Shire, the times he's been on the field, he has his moments where he flashes, right? And then he has his moments where you're sitting there going, I don't know why you didn't make that play. Why aren't you in that position? Why aren't you being better about it? Um, but I can tell you what, Flanagan Foles is very, very high in these coaches' eyes. He's going to get a lot of opportunity to be able to unseat Al Shire from that starting spot. There's a lot of give and take when you're building a roster. And some of that is you can't have a bunch of high-priced players at one position. You know Fred Warner's about to get paid. You have Dre Greenlaw who's going to get paid eventually. So it makes sense to have cheaper guys next to them. We had Quan Alexander, that was the big signing, that was the big money guy, and now Fred's going to be that guy. So you have a give and take there. So having two young guys that don't make that much money, that are undrafted free agents, that are very flexible and versatile in the linebacking group and room is important. Um, I think Al Shair has proven that he has developed a little bit farther than Flanagan Foles, but he also has a year longer in the system playing for D'Amico Ryans in the 49ers. So the development is is kind of on par. I think Flanagan Foles is actually developing at the same level that Al Shire is. Al Shire, though, has proven that he can play Mike linebacker. He can play Will linebacker. He can play Sam linebacker. Where we haven't seen Flanagan Foles do much besides play late in games and then play special teams. Al Shire is the leader in the clubhouse when it comes to this. The flexibility, the, first, the versatility isn't very important. I think he can go sideline to sideline. He's a good in coverage. He's not great. If he was great in coverage, there would be zero question that this guy is the player. Still plays a little light. Um, sometimes struggle stopping running backs at the contact point. Gets pushed back a little bit, which is a problem, especially in base. You know, four three downs when you're you know it's third and one. You know, uh, you know, fourth and one, whatever those are. At least when we had somebody like a Quan Alexander, you knew he could come up and stuff them in the hole. 
Al Shair hasn't proven to be a much better tackler than Quan Alexander either. So I would say that right now Al Shair has the lead, but you're right. They do like Flanagan Foles, and Flanagan Foles is going to have an opportunity. Can he stay healthy? Can he develop to more than just a special teams player? You know, um, I we talked about this earlier, and I feel like this is a position where they could improve, and I think there's a decent chance that they will do that once camp starts if they're not happy. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'd love to see Quan come back and uh, reunite the Hot Boys. I think Quan is clearly a better player than either of these two guys. No disrespect, but I think Quan's a better player if he's healthy coming off that Achilles and all those issues he had. Um, another guy available is KJ Wright. I think he's a little better. Now, I don't know that KJ Wright will give the Niners any sort of discount to sign him, where I think the possibilities of that with Quan are much higher. But um, they both have potential. It's just, especially with um, Al Shair, the tackling scares me. It, and to me, to be a great defense, you have to be a sound tackling team at every spot. And that's what scares me a little bit is neither of these guys, it, that is that their strong suit. I yeah, mean, that's fair. It's not it's not an unreasonable critique or concern to have with both of these guys. Um, and while I would say I, I have less concerns about Flanagan Foles in that kind of position because I haven't seen him as much on the field. Yeah. But the caveat to that, right, the flip side is that maybe the reason he hasn't been on the field is because he's a worse tackler than Shire. <laughs> there is always that possibility. Uh, training camp is going to give... I think us in this room, definitely, and just 49ers fans in general and this coaching staff, a better idea of where these guys are because they're going to get more run than I think they've ever, ever gotten in the preseason. Um, and by no means, this isn't to discount these undrafted guys as well. Justin Hilliard could still show out as well as Elijah Sullivan, so they could shock some people as well, especially with Nathan Jerry gone now and cut and just off this roster. Those undrafted linebackers are going to have an opportunity, but you may be spot on there. They could be going after another linebacker. And it would make sense for it to be Quan. I think Horses is right on that. And Quan has proven that he's better than Al Shire. He beat him out. It's true. If if Al Shire would have been better than Quan Alexander before the 2020 season, they would have moved on from Quan and saved the money early on. They didn't. They moved him later because they knew it was a salary cap thing, and they were looking at what was going to happen in 2021 with the whole COVID thing. They knew the salary cap was going to change. That is why they traded Quan Alexander. They did not trade Quan Alexander because he didn't play well, because he wasn't you know, contributing to the team. That's not why they traded him. They traded him for financial reasons only. So if you could add him on the minimum salary, why not? He's still better than the guys you got. It's an improvement there. KJ Wright, I think, is, like Horst said, a little bit too expensive um, I don't think he's coming in for a league minimum where the 49ers could at least approach Quan Alexander about, hey, look, you're coming back from the Achilles. You know our system. You are comfortable here. You can play here. And then you can go out and get a bigger contract next year if you would like. Plus, we're already paying you over $4 million. You might as well come in and, and earn an extra one and a half from us and play with a team that you like and have a chance to win a Super Bowl. That's mm -hmm. fair. Maybe get Bill Romanowski down here. Ooh, Bill Romanowski. Does he still play? I saw him in a movie. Congratulations, Horst Ehrlich. I did like Bill Romanowski as a player. Accurate. I, I would. I mean, if we could get a Bill Romanowski type player to man that position, I'd be happy with it. Glorious. Like you brought up about the them, you know, them not playing so much. The league is going to where base sets are just yeah. not as needed. Mm -hmm. But what you still need them is in certain situations against certain teams that like to load up. Um, so you have to have it available. What that means, I don't know. But they did definitely decide Nathan Jerry wasn't an option. Is that something that just proves that they didn't want Nathan Jerry? Do they have something else in mind? Or is that showing us that they are very comfortable with Al Shair and with Flanagan Foles? And those two are actually better than Nathan Jerry, and he wasn't needed on this roster. Un Go ahead. Unfortunately, because as we've told you guys in the past, there are no leaks here. We don't know. That is true. We can we can only, you know, kind of try to gleam into it and look Speculate into it. Speculate a little. That's what it's about at this point. Yeah. I mean, and also what is showing on the field. You know, we don't know why they cut Nathan Jerry, um, but we we did know what his weaknesses were. Um, the, but the big question still hanging over this team is how many linebackers and how many safeties are they going to keep? How many guys are going to fit into hybrid roles? Uh, if they are planning on keeping extra safeties in a hybrid role, there's not a lot of opportunities for linebackers in this you know, 49ers defense. So it, it's a tough room to make. These two are two very good players. One of them is going to start, one of them is not, and the one that's not might not even be on this roster. That That is completely fair. Not only is it fair, Ant, as Horst said, you know, maybe 
right? We got the Royal Rumble all set. We know who the two guys are that are competing, or maybe it's a secret entrant that's going to slide in there and make this a triple threat, or maybe Talano, Hufanga, or Marcel, Marcel Harris are coming in from the back with the steel chair, ready to bash somebody yeah. over the head and take that over. We don't know, but what we do know is that you need to hit that subscribe button right now and join the Cutback Crew today. Become a member of this great community. You want to be a part of all these great episodes, subscribe, hit that notification bell, like the video, share it with the rest of the faithful, and most importantly, guys, go get yourself some sweet Cutback merch. Look at that TCC shirt down there. You want to rep the Cutback crew. You want your 49ers inspired gear. You want to be hopefully like George Kittle one day, who's hopefully going to wear our shirts around and shop it around. We, yes, right. we would love that. It would be great. Yeah, one of these guys could be coming in like the Giant Gonzalez in Royal Rumble 1993, taking out The Undertaker. Um, that could happen. Who knows? Maybe one of those guys is, is Hilliard. Maybe one of those guys is Griffith. Who knows? Maybe someone's coming out of left field that we haven't talked about yet. What we have talked about is two great players that are competing for a position that is, plays in the 49ers defense 20% of the time, which is a significant amount. Um, who's going to win it? I'm curious what everyone thinks. Are you are you suggesting it's Barry Bonds? Definitely not. Definitely you said not. coming out of left field. I get it. It's a baseball well, reference. Yeah, it, it is, I guess. Or, yeah. Well, you know, right field isn't easy, you know. You can be awkward or slow. It's true. It's very true indeed. Look, at the end of the day, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of different things that can go on here with the safety room. We look forward to having that conversation with you down in the comment section below, letting us know about all of these guys, whether it's one of these two guys, whether it's someone else. We want to hear from you. And until next time, 49ers fans, you stay safe. Remember the right way is always the 49ers way.